So I was hoping today to share, um, I guess, a bit of share a few of my experiences from a commercial viewpoint um, that maybe you guys can take away and use when you have a product or a project uh, you wish to make some money from. So just a quick show of hands we're going to have. How many of you guys and girls, sorry, have um, developed a product and had in the back of your mind the desire to turn that hobby into a career? Okay. And if not a career, how about um, sustainable living that allows you to keep on inventing? <laughs> yeah. Hands up. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, we all have data for a reason, and we're discussing this over lunch. It's a uh, machine. However, um, you know, success is defined in so many different ways. I mean, it's but some people see financial freedom as success. Uh, for me, it's recognition of a job well done. But um, you know, whichever way you look at it, there are, I guess, there are some key rules that um, that are passed down that, uh, that help you achieve it. So, um, so yeah. So starting with, I guess, the challenges ahead. So many of you will be in different stages of the, the story that I'm going to tell at, at this moment in time. You may well have a pile of uh, pile of wires on the workbench somewhere. And you may well have something shiny that you're looking to find a decent marketing company to get out in front of lots of people. Um, whichever stage you're at, um, the challenges you are either facing now or will be very shortly uh, are as follows. Um, having a support structure in place, I can't emphasize how important it is. For, for me personally, I mean, I came from, you know, I've come from a sales background, that's what I've done my entire life. Um, technology is something that personally that really interests me. Um, and the whole ethos and ideas behind an open source community um, drives very well with my personal beliefs of sharing absolutely everything. Um, and having a support structure in place is, without a shadow of doubt, one of the most important things that I could uh, urge all of you to do. Um, and when I say support structure, there's a, there's a few different aspects to it. Um, family, you know, if people around you are buying into what you're doing, you're much more likely to uh, not be getting a hard time from the missus when you're uh, locking yourself away in a room until whatever hours at night. Um, and also when it comes to finding other like-minded people, I'll be out networking events like this. Um, it's actually making the most out of these introductions because the one thing that I'm uh, sort of at this point I've not managed to do so far is actually get around to meet enough of you yet. I hope to do so afterwards. Um, but it's what you do with those introductions afterwards that ultimately defines how much use it was meeting those people, the amount of business cards that, uh, that get left on my desk with one, two emails sent and, you know, never, never to be heard of again. Um, and I guess one of the challenges as well is, uh, is uh, understanding the competition. So say, for example, um, in, a hard, in a hardware sense, if you're making, you know, a product that has a very specific purpose, um, there will be other people either trying to or currently doing something of a very similar nature or solving a very similar problem. Um, a common, I guess, a, a common approach to that, to that fact is by avoiding them like the plague and trying to pinch their ideas. Um, the thing I love about the open source community is it's all about sharing. So I'd, uh, I'd urge you to observe the masses and do you know, the exact opposite and actually try and build some bridges when it comes to seeing people are doing similar things to you. Um, how we go about doing it, there's, I've seen, um, I've seen a very specific approach taken over the last what 10, 15 years, time and time again, um, and it starts with a light bulb, light bulb moment of an idea, and um, you know you're about to revolutionise the world from your garage, on your workbench, with a bunch of wires, and see some smiles and nods. I'm, I'm sure we've been there. Um, and the next stage is always going to friends and family, uh, or anyone that will listen, and uh, allowing them or giving them a chance to buy into your idea for a bit of seed funding. Um, and as soon as you've got, a, got enough money to try and fund your idea, it's, um, it's then trying to find like-minded people so building a team around you. Um, and once you've got those people, you know, it's looking to develop that idea to the nth degree, so it's a polished, polished article, um, and then engaging your customers. It's a way that I've seen over the last 15 years, like I say, I personally believe it's a strong Strong part of the reason why a lot of small businesses and you know small enterprises fail um, in their first year. Another approach that um, was uh, 
I guess taught to me at quite a young age by someone much wiser than me um, that was very successful in business. Um, and if any of you guys and girls have any aspirations of making um, a living out of something that you enjoy doing, um, you may well, may well benefit from some of these. Um, so it still starts with the idea. It's where everything spawned from. Um, and whatever your idea is, um, I think the first step is challenging yourself. And what I mean is asking yourself a series of questions. And they're not going to be the easiest of questions. There's going to be some moments stood in the mirror asking yourself some questions that you really probably don't want the answer to. Um, the questions start with, what problem am I solving? So identify the problem. Um, is the problem that I'm solving a commercial problem? Um, is it uh, a problem to save the world? Am I looking to try you know, capitalise on ecology? Um, or am I purely just trying to make life better for people or easier? You know, is it a problem of convenience? After you've established what the problem is, it's uh, identifying who would want the solution. So if there are a lot of people with similar problems, you can bet two things. Um, first, that someone would have tried it before. And if they haven't tried it before, someone's trying it at the moment. Once you've identified perhaps who wants a solution, um, it's also looking at who doesn't want a solution. Um, someone I know very well that uh, when the um, so after the uh, after the dot net after the internet uh, became reality, Wi-Fi was you know the, the, the next phase if you like, and uh, when all Wi-Fi was uh, was being charged for, someone was looking at um, putting trying to find a way to put free Wi-Fi into as many public places as humanly possible, that could be airports and train stations. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't successful because a large part of the reason it wasn't successful in that venture. Um, was because there were some very powerful entities that did not want to see Wi-Fi free at that stage. Um, didn't make sense to them. Once you've established who it is that doesn't want to, you know, have your have your solution on the market, you can figure out whether or not you would pay to solve this problem. And if you would, it's finding other people that would. So as soon as you've got the idea of bringing these questions to other people, so as soon as you've identified who it is that would potentially benefit from you know, your solution, um, it's finding out these other people that would too. Because, let's remember, without them, whether or not you perceive success as financial freedom, um, recognition, even having a job well done, if you're solving your own problem, <clears throat> you won't get that unless there are other people that have the same viewpoints on whether or not that solution should exist. So engaging the market, very commercial term, what I mean is speaking to people, it's identifying who it is you need to speak to. Um, the questions that you've asked of yourself, it's purely a process of just repeating that, it's asking people, so asking questions, asking people the questions that you know you perhaps don't want answered. So if you're inventing products, you've had a great idea, you believe in it strongly, as we all do in, in ideas that we bring up ourselves, um, the last thing in the world any of us is going to want is to have our baby crushed because we have an idea, we believe in it strongly, and someone comes around, turns around to us and says, well, do you know what, that won't work because X, Y, and Z. They're the things you need to learn, they're the things you need to hear at a very, very early stage in the process. Um, not everything works, and I don't know about you guys, but if I was going to plan my time and energy and effort into something, I'd much rather establish that it didn't work quick and fail fast rather than dragging out an inevitable process of figuring out that something doesn't work at a much later stage. Preparing for those hard truths is probably the hardest part. It's the hardest part, but it's the part that gets avoided, avoided most frequently. Um, don't stop asking those questions of other people that you would consider to be your customers until you run out of questions. Um, and then the one question that I would, I would urge people to ask, once you do feel you run out of questions to ask your potential customers, um, it would be to ask them, what they would ask themselves if they were you. Because believe it or not, um, insight comes from some really strange places often. And, and what I've found as being a very new member to this you know, open source community is that um, when Miles and I are sitting down discussing perhaps the direction the company can take, new products, um, you know, what we're going to do, who we're going to be able to help the best, um, it's not it's very rarely a technical opinion or a non-technical opinion being from me um, that is the answer. It's all, almost always an amalgamation of the two. Um, so getting that insight from people that 
maybe don't have the same point of view or experience or background as yourself. Very, very important. Um, other than that, what I'd say is uh, enjoy what you're doing because the whole so the whole idea of the whole idea of turning a hobby into a career, whether or not it's something you want to do or not, if you want to turn your hobby into a career, never lose sight of the fact that you started it because you love it. And if you find yourself not loving it, it's because you're not doing it right. And swallowing that pride and hitting the reset button and taking yourself back to a point where you do enjoy doing it again, that's often the hardest thing. Um, so yeah, but, uh, yeah, I hope some, some of what I've said is, uh, can be of some use to you guys in the future. And uh, yeah, look forward to catching up with you on later on. Welcome any questions. <laughs> and I'm just starting my startup now. So I'll, I'll hang on. Do I shake the enigma of the lines now? Okay, any questions? Yeah, okay. So the, the experts that you're asking about whether it's a good idea or not are often the incumbents who say it's, uh, they don't want it or that it shouldn't exist. Can you work out which ones are telling you it's rubbish? Because they can't see it, or they just don't want it. Clever ones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm being flippant. But no, that's a very, very good question. Um, okay, have we got the difference? Yeah, it's um, you establish firstly whose opinion you want. So it's whose opinion is valuable to you. Um, without the relationship with those people, it's very, very difficult to put any weight on the answers they give you. Um, earlier on I mentioned that building, observing the masses and doing the opposite, so building bridges with people that do similar things to you, that was with that exact question in mind. If you have those bridges built already and a pre-existing relationship with people that perhaps could be deemed as your competition, um, if you have those bridges, the answers you're likely to receive from those people you would hope would be honest. Business is business at the end of the day, there's a lot of people, unfortunately, you're right, there are scrupulous people that will give you the wrong answer for that reason. Um, but with that in mind, I, I guess to answer your question with perhaps a, a suggestion um, would be not to, um, not to direct questions to, uh, to check the validity of your product at one particular type of person. Um, so certainly for some of the, some of the things we've been doing, this is a recent, we've got some exciting, um, exciting things coming up. And, and I've, I've made a point of going speaking to everyone from garden centres to Farnell to um, elderly people in my community just to try and get a decent cross-section of opinion because um, otherwise, like you say, yeah, if you try and weight your questions in a certain area you're going to get a certain time of answer over and over again. Yeah. Any more questions? Um, yeah. um, it's more of a time question. Um, you mentioned that you validate your idea at the start. Absolutely. But I think it's also important that throughout the whole process of creating something, you keep validating it. Because you might get that validation at the start, but if things change whilst you're making it, you come out with an end product, the user or the customer then says, that's not what we want. And Couldn't agree more, it's a great point. Um, what I've just spoken about for the last sort of 15 minutes, uh, unfortunately was cobbled together at quite late notice. My original presentation was going to be on commercialising your ideas, um, incorporating a large part of the mechanics behind launching a product. Um, someone did a much better job with me than doing that owner somewhere um, earlier on. So I felt that uh, perhaps giving you guys, um, giving you guys my experience from a non-technical point of view as to the approach and how to develop uh, as how to uh, commercialise it might be more useful. Give you something to take away, hopefully. Couldn't agree more, great point. Yeah. It's called pivoting these days rather than getting it wrong, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the number of pivots is, is regarded as a, a good a, thing. A good thing, yeah. <laughs> um, you mentioned uh, about um, getting buy-in from, from friends and family uh, when you're trying to get your ideas started. Obviously now we've got crowdfunding being part of that whole thing. How do you think that's changing the, could change the dynamic of getting your idea off the ground? Hugely. Um, <coughs> for some positive and some destructive, potentially destructive ways. That's, that's, a, that's a huge subject to delve into, but um, yeah, I guess my personal opinion on that is obviously it's a little bit neutral, but uh, my personal